Maybe you think of fighting as a sport. Maybe you think of fencing as time traveling back into history. I don't. Would you like to know why? I didn't have a choice, that's why. If I had had a choice, I would have chosen something else. For me, this has never been a sport or a game. For me, this has always been about survival. Let me tell you how I went from a street fighting disaster to fencing master. There's an old ditty that says, God made men big and God made men small. Then along came Smith and Wesson and equalized them all. <laughs> See, I, I was born under a bad sign, if you know what I mean. I wasn't very big and I wasn't very strong and I wasn't very brave, but I was pretty smart. At least I was smart enough to know I needed me <laughs> an equalizer if I was gonna make it through another day with body and soul intact. You're always attacked emotionally first. Now, the first thing I had to do was survive emotionally. If I didn't do that, nothing else would matter much. This is where my first equalizer comes in. Peter Blood, Dr. Blood, Captain Blood. Man, I ate up <laughs> Raphael Sabatini like it was cornflakes. And uh, in the movie with Errol Flynn in the title role, you know, Flynn as Captain Blood, man, no matter how bad things got, No matter how bad things got, he never lost that. That cocky confidence, that self-assurance, you know. You couldn't lay a glove on him no matter what. I needed me some of that in a big way. Uh, I must have watched that movie a thousand times. The, the, the fencing, the fencing part in Captain Blood seemed like the personification of Captain Blood's absolutely unconquerable spirit. You know, it, it came to symbolize that for me, that, uh, that coolness. I still took a beating every day, but they couldn't break me, because that was Captain Blood. I found my second equalizer, in the back pages of comic books and magazines, in those cheesy ads and said, uh, learn karate, fear no man. <laughs> the secret death touch, no strength required. Sounded like just what I needed. I was getting real tired of being afraid. But dig, I, I didn't give a damn about tournaments or trophies or medals or belts or building character or achieving enlightenment. I just was looking for a way to fight back and stop getting my ass kicked. Or if I couldn't do that, at least it wouldn't be for free. So it came to pass that I met a guy who knew a guy and who knew a guy. And before you could say goju five times fast, I was practicing karate. And I was serious about it too. I trained every, every day. And you know, those, those ass whippings I'd been taking started to taper off. So now fast forward a bunch of years and uh, I'm a freshman in college. And I happen to hear that there's some old guy on campus who's a, who's a fencer. And that old Captain Blood Black Magic just lunged right back into my brain. At my instigation, a bunch of us got together and pestered this poor bastard until he agreed to teach us. So, uh, so I got to feel like Captain Blood. But I discovered there was more. A lot more. What I discovered was fighting on a scientific level that I had never dreamed of. I discovered insights into combat, 
which is to say into conflict, that were stunning and profound. I discovered an entirely different way of being, and it was compelling. It was, it was so compelling that I completely <laughs> uh, rearranged my entire life to, uh, to study this. And, and now I, I teach it, partly because I think this stuff is so important that you need to know it. You really need to know this stuff. It's going to be useful all the time in everything you do. And partly I teach it because nobody taught me. <laughs> Why didn't somebody teach me this stuff when I was a kid? Why did I have to be like scarred up and too late before, <laughs> before I figured this stuff out? Um, better late than never, I suppose. So, karate, fencing. Sometimes I'm not really sure which one is the chicken and which one is the egg. What do you think? Let me know in the comments.